Okay, everybody. Um, in the last two videos, I've shown you the Academy Search Complete or EBSCO host uh, with several databases that you have access to there and Science Direct. What I want to show you right now is actually another um, another database called ProQuest. Now, this used to be called the ProQuest Dissertation and Theses, uh, but as you can see here, it's just called ProQuest. So I'm going to click on ProQuest and take into this database. Now, ProQuest is both a journal service, they also have a book service, but they also have a service for what they call uh, theses and dissertations. Uh, to obtain a master's degree, you have to pass the peer review process, which means you write a really, really long paper uh, and that goes through the peer review process. You have to defend that paper against three PhDs in your department or in your school. Um, I did for my master's degree. Uh, I defended uh, my uh, thesis on law enforcement cooperation uh, against three people who had read it and were experts in criminal justice and security and managed to pass that and get my master's degree. That's one, uh, one type of paper that ProQuest will hold. Another is a dissertation. And, and you know, you've always heard the joke, uh, you know, it has to be a short answer. You're not writing a dissertation here. Uh, well, dissertations are very, very long articles. Uh, my dissertation took me a little over a year to write, and I had some 300 sources, or maybe a little bit more. I think maybe just over 300 sources in my dissertation. ProQuest, uh, if your school uh, participates in the program, ProQuest holds copies of people's theses and dissertations, which means that you have a paper that has passed the peer review process that has tons and tons and tons of sources in it on your specific topic. So, <coughs> excuse me, what I want to do here is I want to look at some of the databases. Uh, like for instance, we don't need some of these. And what I want to do is, ah, here we go. We'll keep policy file. No, we don't need policy file. Don't need periodicals, those won't be useful to us. We don't need music periodicals. Uh, historical newspapers, no. Psychology database, we're gonna keep going. And uh, we'll keep the science and technology collection going. But this database right here is the one we're most interested in. Dissertations and Theses Global. Um, this is gonna be a huge source for you. Not only can you use the source itself, Let's say somebody writes, uh, you know, the topic we've been talking about is capital punishment and uh, deterrence. Let's say somebody writes a, a dissertation or a thesis um, at the master's or the doctoral level. Then not only can you use this source, but you can use all of their other sources too. You still have to go and read them and you still have to go and write an annotated bibliography on them. Um, but a lot of the legwork in finding these sources is available to you. So don't, uh, don't discount this just because um, just because it's another another source for you now I'm gonna tell you uh, if I were telling you as a master student I would say leave off full text because sometimes you have to go get things but uh, for now for the purposes here I want you to leave on full text go ahead and just click that little check mark right there and just just turn it on so full text keep it on uh, for the purposes of what we're doing in this class I want you to have that so let's go capital punishment. Ooh, capital punishments. Uh, well, you know what? Let's just do capital punishment and deterrence. Oh, look at that. Somebody's written it somewhere because the keywords are coming up. Let's go find what we can about that. And then we'll narrow this down a little bit, just like we've done in the other databases. Because I'm not going to have you read 10,167 things. Um, no way. I'm not just not going to do that. Okay, so what have we said about date range? This goes a hundred years. We don't need a hundred years. So let's go the last, oh, I don't know, 10? Let's enter a date range starting in 2006, ending in 2017. Let's update that. So by clicking the update, it should narrow it down. Oh, and it did. It cut out 6,000 results. Okay, now we're going to search within this, but take a look at our first hit. Oh my goodness. Deconstruction of capital punishment, a perspective on the deterrent effect. 
Well, I'm just going to open that puppy right on up. There are another 4,742 results. We probably have quite a bit of stuff to go through. So I'm going to take a look at this. Uh, this was at Southern University and Agricultural Mechanical College. I don't know where that is. Um, but more importantly, I don't really care where it is and the fact that this has been peer reviewed. So let's take a look. Uh, this is someone's doctoral dissertation. So when somebody wrote this and they defended it against, um, against other PhDs, uh, they obtained their doctors of philosophy, their PhD in this. So this is going to be a very good source. Not only can you use what this person has, has written about, uh, let's see, this person is uh, Dr. Beard. So not only can you use Dr. Beard's work here, if you scroll right on down to all of their work, you can easily, I'm gonna, it's just because the page doesn't go on the way down here. Where are their sources? You know they're going to have them. There they are. Okay. Uh, racial prejudice in the death penalty. New insights on capital punishment. Um, let's see here. Some of these are going to be books. Racial attitudes and opinions about capital punishments, preliminary findings. Although that's a little bit older, 1998. Uh, let's see. Oh, look at this one. Uh, again, 1998, but I don't know. This this one I might let slide. Deterrence, brutalization, and the death penalty. Another examination of Oklahoma's return to capital punishment. Uh, all right, so we've got several sources here. And remember, I'm only asking for 10 on your first one, 20 overall. Uh, of course, you can keep going as long as you want. Um, but you know, I think for the purposes of this, 10 to 20 starting and then finishing is going to be fine. Uh, so my guess is we're just in the B's and now we're in the C's. You're probably going to find quite a bit uh, just right here. And I think I know that person. Yep. And let's see, are there any other authors in here I know? Well, I know they didn't stop with the E's. So uh, facts about the death penalty. All right. So when it comes down to things like this, you're not going to be able to use. Uh, what I want is I want uh, peer-reviewed sources like Journal of Police Science Administrations, Police Attitudes Towards Capital Punishment. If that were anything other than 1986, this would be a perfect source if it weren't for the fact that it's so old. So those are going to be some things you have to contend with. Um, but yeah, you, you get the idea. Okay, that's just one source. That's just this one. So let's come in here and see if we can find anything else. Testing deterrence theory with offenders, assessing the effects of personal and vicarious experience with punishment and punishment avoidance. Well, not capital punishment. Oh, capital punishment supporting the death of deterrence. Let's take a look at that one. That sounds good. Mississippi State University. This is a dissertation, I believe. Um, this will be the final work of Dr. Cook before Dr. Cook became a, oh, it's a thesis. So hopefully this person, Amanda Page Cook, went on to become a PhD somewhere else, but this is from Mississippi State. This source can be used because it's 2007, but understand that the sources that this person used may be a little out of date. So you can come in here and you can download the PDF. You can certainly get all this information. Now, uh, when it comes to grabbing the citation files here, uh, this one's a little, a little more simplistic. Download the PDF, do the same thing, um, grab the grab the title, because when you download the PDF, uh, it's going to say output, or in this case, out, which is come again another useless way to name things, but that's the way it goes. So I'm going to show this in folder. There's the word out. I'm actually going to paste the title right back in there capital and punishment and then we're going to throw this up to the research methods um, research methods downloads you know what just for grins I'm going to pause and clean this up so you guys don't get confused about where I'm at in my own folder and like magic my drive is cleaned up okay so in here I have uh, capital punishment and deterrence the file the logic case 
I've got almost everything I need uh, to download. Whoop, it doesn't look like this file downloaded. Let's download that file again, just for grins. And we'll rename it just like we just did. I'll throw this into research methods downloads. So now we have it there. Okay, I'll come I'll come back to this. This little button right here, this cite button, is going to be where you grab your citation file. So if you click the citation file, oh no, it seems like there was a problem. Well, let's try that again. Well, this may be one of those things where we have to um, we we'll have to ask f for forgiveness and make one ourselves. But let's see if we can get it done. Nope, that's not going to happen. Okay, well, I'll show you a trick to that uh, in another one, but normally what you do is you click a citation button here. Let's come up to here and see if we can grab this one. Well, there may just be a problem with the website right now. Uh, but usually it's a citation file right here. You click it, it'll say, what would you like to do with that? And then you can say export or save as RIS format, just like you have in the other databases. Okay, so this is ProQuest. This is a huge source. Uh, we can probably get 20 or 30 articles just out of uh, these two papers right here. Because again, it probably took this person six to eight months to write a, a thesis. And I can guarantee you it took at least a year to write uh, this dissertation. So you've got a lot of references. In fact, for dissertations, they may even have the references listed. Um, you know, you're going to see a lot of stuff in here. Uh, so, you know, don't be afraid to check these out. It's not a normal database people think about. But a lot of the leg lifting has been done for you. So if we come on down to Ms. Cook's uh, references here, we're going to see older references but uh, probably some very valid ones. At least it'll get us thinking in the right direction. Uh, and probably start looking at some authors that we hadn't thought about before. But let's come back over here. And let's look at this instead of by relevance. Let's take a look at most recent first. And the reason I want to do that is because now we're going to look at dissertations and theses that are uh, in the same idea, uh, but a lot newer. So let's come down, you know what, uh, let's scroll down a little bit very quickly. The downside with going with relevance f first is that, um, you know, obviously you get things that are much more easily used. When you go by date, uh, it's the relevancy goes out the window. All right, we'll tell you what, we're just gonna pick this one for simplicity's sake. Okay, uh, sometimes, like I said, they'll have the references right here. If you click on that, it will take you to all the references that are listed in the document. And some of these are gonna be extremely easy for you to find. They'll even be full text finder options that will link back to Tarleton's database systems or whatever school, uh, if, you're, if you're looking at these videos from another school. Uh, so it can be a really good, useful thing here, especially if they already have access to the full text. So I can preview and, and full text this particular article directly. And again, I can come back up here. Should be able to cite unless there seems to be a problem. Right now there seems to be a problem with the database. Uh, but you get the idea, and I think this will be a very good source for you. You can do this... Um, you know, the, the upside to, to theses and dissertations is the fact that uh, everyone's doing one um, at at least the master's and PhD levels. So you're getting extremely detailed articles about a very specific subject. Uh, this isn't, you know, normal students going through a bachelor's program. Uh, these guys are making it their subject matter expertise on these subjects. So when you get this level of work, what you are getting is the epitome of this topic. So don't be afraid to look at it. Uh, thesis and dissertations are going to save you a lot of time and effort. Okay, I hope this has been helpful to you. And the next one I'll do will probably be uh, Springerlink or maybe even a couple of the other databases first, uh, depending on how these database systems are working tonight. And I uh, hope you found it useful and I'll catch you in the next